Hello guys and welcome to Play It Right. Today I'm gonna explain how to play Vengeance by Mighty Boards. Uh, Vengeance is a really cool board game that is inspired by revenge movies like Old Boy and Kill Bill, where uh, there is a bad guy or a bunch of bad guys who have wronged you and you prepare yourself uh, for a really bloodthirsty comeback situation. The structure of the game uh, follows a movie structure so there's three acts, and in those three acts you have two phases alternating. Uh, one is montage and the other one is combat. During the montage phase uh, you try to heal yourself to get more ability upgrades and item upgrades to be ready for the combat that follows. And during the combat phase you try to find the bosses who wronged you and obviously kill them. And it becomes a very interesting dice puzzle. In this video I'm going to be explaining all the phases of the game in detail, uh, but I suggest for your first game of Vengeance you should follow the quick start guide, which you can find inside the box, and it actually gives you some presets, so you can skip some of the initial parts and go straight to the meat of the game and into your first fights. I'm going to be setting up a game for four players, so I'm going to use all of the four gangs. If you're playing uh, with two or three players, you, you need only three of the gangs. So you need to remove uh, this gang from the vengeance cards and the boss cards. Next, you need to lay out the den boards, which are these, and these represent the hideouts of the gangs. So to start, find out which ones have the number two on the top right corner and lay them next to each other. It's six of them, so make sure you have all of them. You keep the rest of them together in a stack, all facing the, the dens with the three points. Notice that all of them at the back have the number four dens. The, the layout is not important of the dens because they're independent locations, so you can put them in whatever order. And then over here you put the shop board, with the ability upgrades and the item upgrades. So now you can start populating them. As you can see, there's a lot of different combinations over here and they have different costs. Place the remaining of them face down in a pile next to the shop board. Then each player chooses a hero. I chose a little Gudrun. So I have to take the, the according miniature of little Gudrun. Notice that the hero miniatures have a white base and I take the corresponding uh, montage cards. These are the small red ones that have the, the same hero at the back. Then also players select a color. I'm gonna get the red one. And uh, here you have the turn tracker. You put it over there. Here you have the victory points tracker. You place the colored markers on the point tracker board and at the player order tracker, the order of which will be determined during the wronging phase. And the third colored marker you keep aside. Then you place this cool turn marker on the wronging section of uh, this board. And then let's go to the bosses. This is the, the boss card deck and you should be looking for the four big bosses. You should be looking for the ones with the crown symbol on the top right corner and you should be finding four of them. So these you set aside for a second. Now, you shuffle the rest of them and you place one on each deck. And there is a denoted space for that, these red dots. You place one at each den. This is where each boss is hiding. Then you take the big bosses, shuffle them together with the rest of them and you put it aside. Now it's time to place the minion miniatures on the dens. You have to find the miniatures with the same color base. So the black ones go here. The blue ones are the gunmen. Uh, I will explain in detail uh, later on what each of these dudes does. For now, you can leave empty all the red miniature spots. Also, don't forget to put the wild tokens. So these are the wild tokens in all the zones that you can see on the dens. Then, from the vengeance card deck, you set aside the blitz cards for now. And finally, you get all the white dice, the fighting dice, and the damage cubes. Don't forget to lay down the mission cards. You shuffle them, you put two, and you do the same for the achievements. Well, 
Let's have a look at the hero's board. Uh, you have three attributes, the mind, the skill, and the health. As you can see, the stats are different for different heroes, and you can't receive more damage than you can take. A vengeance card that would take the hero above the sustainable amount of damage cannot be played. The mind is how clever the hero is, and it determines how many dice you get to roll during the montage round, and the player order at the start of the game. The S here means that you can swap a drafted die for another result that you might choose. The skill uh, determines how many red dice uh, you get to, to roll during the fight rounds. The symbols here refer to the green bonus die and specifically to this result, in which case you count as a, as a shoot, and in this case you count as a miss. And then you have the health and it shows how much uh, damage you can receive. Then during the gameplay you suffer damage from the different bosses that attack you and you populate these tracks with damage cubes. You have red damage cubes and, and black damage cubes. The black damage cubes are severe damage which uh, as you can see here it's harder to heal. These hearts here show how many points you need to heal them and we will explain that a bit later. And there is different type of damage. Here you can see, for example, Limp Oscar beats you up and that causes you uh, to hurt, for example. That this impacts your health. Whereas Roxy Queen uh, uses a driller to the head and uh, that causes stress, so this affects your mind and your skill makes you a little bit broken. So you would have to put those cubes over there. During the wrong game, the players get tortured and bashed by the, the gang bosses. In their wrong game, players start to develop their overall strategy for the game because they get to choose which one of those they're gonna play during the game. So what happens during the wrong game? You deal nine cards to each player. The player gets to see them uh, secretly, obviously, and he selects one of them according to the strategy he wants to follow, then he passes uh, the remaining 8 cards to the player on his left and he gets the other 8 cards from the player on his right. Then each player selects one more card and this continues until everyone has selected 7 vengeance cards. This is your vengeance hand and you need to keep it hidden from the other players. Now players select 3 cards from the hand and they represent the bad guys that wronged you and you play them in front of you and the same does every other player and you suffer the damage that is written there. So for example for the chopped finger I get one broken and one hurt and from the other two cards I get, I get one stress, one severe stress and one hurt. The severe damage is usually put on the left outmost track of the board. Then everyone looks at their mind value. The highest mind value is the player who gets to play first in the montage phase. You take the remaining vengeance cards, you add the blitz vengeance cards that were set aside and you shuffle them all together and then you form the vengeance card deck and you put it face down. During the montage phase the players get the chance to heal themselves and prepare themselves for the combat round that is next. The montage round is split into four phases. First you have the dice draft, then you have the action phase, then you have the vengeance phase, and then you have the player order. The main three actions that you can do during the montage is heal, um, upgrade and recon. The heal action that is represented by the heart symbol allows you to remove cubes from your hero board and uh, how many you need for each attribute are written here. As said before, the severe damage is harder to heal so you need more of these symbols. Then you have the upgrade which is symbolized by this which allows you to get ability upgrades and item upgrades from the shop and these allow you to perform combos, very powerful combos during the combat. So once you buy them, you can put them in the upgrade slot 
You can have as many as you can buy. You can rearrange them before a combat, but always, if you stack them, there is the one on top that is the one that you can use during the play. There are also the item upgrades, which you discard after the use. So basically, you can have four active upgrades at any given time. And there is also the recon action that allows you to gain recon tokens which are these ones, which later on, during the combat phase, you can spend and see the face of the boss that is hiding in that den. So the first phase is the dice draft. All the players get their montage dice and they roll in a common pool. So I roll my two dice, determined by the mind stat, in a common pool together with the rest of the players. Then starting with the fastest player, that was determined earlier, each player gets to select one of the dice and takes it. Then this continues in player order until all of the dice are claimed. Remember, you can only get back as many dice as you put in. Let's see the symbols on the montage dice. So this is the recon symbol that we saw before. This is the speed token that adds one point to your speed score and we will see later on how that happens. This is a, a wild token. This you can use during the, uh, the next phase, which is the action phase, when you place your cards, place them over here. You can use this to boost one point any montage card and also it allows you to buy new vengeance cards during the vengeance phase. This is the upgrade that we saw before that allows you to buy ability upgrades and items. And this is a double heal. Gives the player two heal points. So let's say I drafted these two dice during the dice drafting phase. A wild and two heal points. So now it's time to place the montage cards. So each player has these montage cards with the according here at the back. Make sure you don't include in them the cards with this symbol, which is the hardcore mode symbol. Just leave it out. And then from the rest, you are supposed to choose one card for each of these slots. So this would go here, for example. As you can notice, uh, there is two sides to it. The, the left side is a speed side and then the other side has all the rest of the possible symbols. So you choose these cards and then you add the number next to the wild symbol for each one of these slots. So let's say I choose these ones. Then I may choose to boost if I want one of these with the wild dice. So I would boost this one, this one. This you have to do before you reveal the cards. So now everyone reveals these cards at the same time, the first one. And that says that I have two plus two points for upgrades, plus one, five. However, we have to consult the, the player order to see who goes first in buying those ability upgrades. When my turn comes, then I check them out and I can buy up to five points of ability. Every time someone gets upgrades, you have to replenish them with new ones from the upgrade pile. When everyone has finished, you go to the second one. Now I do the healing. This goes together with the healing card, so I have 2 plus 2, 4 plus 1, 5. And now I can remove one of these that costs 3 hearts and two of these, so this is 5 in total. And then the last one gives me 2 plus 0, 2 recon tokens. I get these and I can use them during the combat phase. Now, if I had one more of these dice or if I have, haven't used it there, I could have used this to buy vengeance cards. Also take into account that you, you discard any of those if they're left unused. If I have one of them, I get one new vengeance card. Vengeance cards may be played at any point during the montage or the ready phase of the combat round that I'm gonna talk uh, about later on. You play them face up in front of you and you suffer the damage according to what the, the Vengeance card says. You can play any number of those cards, but you have to be careful not to exceed your limit in, in the damage tracks. Then at the end of the montage phase, we have to determine the new player order. 
So you count all the speed points. I have one plus one plus one, three. You only count this one, you don't count this anymore. You compare with the rest of the players and then, and then you create the right player order. So let's assume that uh, the player order was like this. And these two players have both four and I have a three. Then I go at the end of the player order and these two that are tied, they remain on the same places as before. And I follow. So the order doesn't change if there is a tie, you keep the same order. So that takes us to the combat round. We can move the turn tracker from montage to combat. The combat round consists of two phases, the ready phase and the fight phase. During the ready phase, you can rearrange your upgrades, you can play new vengeance cards, and you can perform recon on any of the dens. You can spend as many recon as you want, if you have the recon tokens, that is. And once you have placed it on a boss card, you can always come back and have a peek at what it was. You don't have to remember it, as long as your recon token is on top of it. Also, later in the fighting phase, you're gonna win those wild tokens when clearing a zone in the den. So these wild tokens, you can exchange them for recon tokens during the ready phase. And now we're finally ready for the fight phase. So in order to figure out what's best for you to do, you need to know how you score a little bit the points. You can score points from killing the, the bosses from which you have the corresponding vengeance cards and you get points by killing everyone inside of a den. So basically you have, you take your fighting dice according to your skill stat always, and you have three rolls during which you have to clear the entire den. So that means kill everyone in it, including the boss. If you manage to do, to kill the boss, then you get uh, the according points that are shown in the vengeance card that you have. If not, you don't score points for the boss, uh, but if you manage to kill everyone else, you get to score the points indicated on the top right corner of the den. You also score points by the goals and the achievements, but we're gonna talk about them later on. So I guess the first thing that I would do in this round, if it was my turn, I would uh, use my recon tokens to see which boss hides in which den. So I would go in this one and I actually got lucky because I have this guy in play right now, Daeshi from the Tengukai clan. I keep this to myself, I don't show it to the other players, I just have a peek. So if this is good enough, I don't need to see anything else. I would go for this guy and I actually have one more card of the same guy on my hands, so that means I can score more points. How does this work? I can play this vengeance card from my hand because we are still in the ready phase and I can do that. And now I have two cards of this guy, which means that if I kill him, I don't get three points as it's indicated on the top right corner, I get five because I have two of them. But I have to suffer the damage that is written on there. So I suffer one severe stress and one hurt. That obviously makes me a bit weaker, but I want to do it because it's more points. It's good to have a look at the dens. These red lines are the doors and this is denoted as one zone. What looks like one room is one zone used in the rulebook. They have several zones and uh, many different types of minions in there, which we will explain in a second. So let's see the die results. We have one gun, which you can use to shoot someone in an adjacent zone. So if I was, say, in here, I could use the gun to shoot this guy that is in an adjacent zone. Then you have the run move, you can move from one zone to the other through a door. Then you have the knife you can use to stab someone. Uh, and you can kill that someone if he has health 1. You can use the double knife to stab someone that has health 2 or even someone that has health 1 and stab him twice. But you cannot use this on two different people. It has to be on the same enemy. 
and this is the enemy activation roll. Uh, when you roll this, then uh, all the enemies on the same zone as you, they activate and they deal one damage to you. The enemy activation roll is resolved at the end of a roll, so you will have the chance to probably kill them before they do activate. There is an exception about the Lord's Gang, but we're gonna talk about it later as well. So, okay, I have chosen to go into this den to fight. I reveal the boss card, I get the boss miniature, and this is the where you put him in this slot. And as you can see in the card, he comes with two friends. One with the yellow, which is the blocker, and the grunt which is the black one. And notice that the boss has health three, as they noted over here. So now I'm ready to start. I could potentially rearrange my item upgrades, but for now I don't need it and I don't have that many. I see that I can roll three dice plus one green bonus die. So let's start the fight. I decide to go in, so I'll put it over here. This is the, the starting spot. Before you roll the dice, you have one free run, so I can go in, in the next zone without rolling the dice, and I choose to do that. Now, before I roll, let's see a little bit about the different enemies that we have here. So, the ones with the black base are the grunts. If you're shooting with a gun, you have to shoot this guy first, before the rest. He's the one who jumps when the bullet comes in the revenge movies. Then we have the henchmen that have the same abilities as the boss. And in this case, uh, this it's a Tengu guy and it deals two hurt when it's activated. Then you have the gunmen. They have a gun so they can shoot you from an adjacent zone when activated. Uh, this is a tough guy. He has health two, whereas the rest of the minions have health one. This is a blocker. Uh, he blocks your way out of the room, so you have to kill him if you want to pass. This is the boss. This is the slot for the boss. And this is another grunt. So I'm ready to roll. I'm rolling. Okay, so I roll these. Two knives and two guns. This counts as a gun, according to the stats here. So using my abilities, I can use the head chopper. It turns any of these results into a double knife. So I can swap the gun into a double knife. For now, let's use another die just to show how it works. So this becomes this for now. Then I can use the charge so this goes both ways. A knife can become a run and a run can become a knife. So in this case I turn my knife into a run. You can use any combination of those abilities, but you can use each one of these once per row. Then with the reverse blade, the double blade becomes two separate knives. So this is two knives and in one of them, because I'm a heavy hitter, I can add one damage to one of the knives. So now we have, from this I have one single knife and a double knife and these three. So what am I gonna do? I'm gonna use one of these knives to knife the, the grunt. Then the other knife for the, the henchman. Then I use the gun to shoot at the gunman from this room because I can only use it in adjacent zones. Now, then I run inside. I take the wild token because I killed everyone in this zone, so it's mine. And now I can use the double knife to kill the tough guy because he has health too. And this wild token is mine as well. Now we go to the second roll. Before I roll, I have the option to move in for free in the next zone, so I do it. So now roll the dice and this is what I rolled. So these are the enemy activation dice. If you roll three of them or more, you can discard one of them and then re-roll the remaining two. I roll again and I got two more. In this case, I can't discard anymore. So I have to suffer the damage 
but note that each enemy only activates once per roll. So no matter how many of these I've rolled, each activated minion and boss, they only deal damage once per fight roll. So now I can turn this gun into a double knife with the head chopper. So that beca this becomes a double knife. With this, I use also the reverse blade and it becomes two separate knives and the heavy hitter, which adds one damage to one of my knives. So this in the end becomes one knife and a double knife, which is enough to kill the boss because he has health three. That's um, the end of this roll. So this is the, the time for the enemy activation. So I get one damage for, from the blocker and one damage from the grunt. So now it's time for my third roll. And I roll these. So this is a miss. And I can use any of these actually to become a double knife. So with this I can uh, kill the blocker and with the other double knife that let's say this uh, gun becomes, I can kill the grunt. This is it, I clear the den. Three, two, one, fight! scored from the boss um, five points because I had double the vengeance card and then I scored from the den three more so in total eight and I move my color eight spaces another way to score points is from the goals and the achievements you can score points from the goals at the end of each game whereas in the achievements you can score them during the game so for example a goal for this game is the kill em all card. The player with the highest number of scored vengeance cards of a single gang gains four victory points. So knowing that this goal is open during this game, you want to score as many vengeance cards from the same gang as possible. Each achievement can be claimed only by one player and each player can claim only one achievement per turn. So for example, the survivor achievement, take four hurt in a fight phase and survive, gain one victory point. Then you remove the boss card and you put it over here in the some sort of hall of fame, the wall of vengeance. And then you remove everything from the board, including any recon tokens. And you discard this then, you flip it on the other side, which is a, a number four, and you put it at the end of the den board pile. And you draw the next one in line. And then you repopulate it with a new boss card face down and all the minions. Important thing to note is that the damage that you can deal to an enemy does not carry over from one roll to another. So if you want to kill an enemy that has health too, you have to do it in the same roll. But you're free to use the order of the actions during the roll as you wish. For example, you might shoot the enemy from an adjacent zone and then you might run into the same zone and finish him off with a stab. And the same applies uh, to the actions that you gain from combos. If you find yourself in a situation where none of your vengeance cards matches the boss cards in play on the table, then you cannot score any points for the bosses, but you can still score points uh, for clearing the dens. In order to enter in a specific den, since you don't have the matching vengeance card in your hand or in play, then you need to have in play another boss of the same gang as the boss that is in the den. In that case, if you kill um, everyone in the den, the boss can be excluded from that, then you score the points of the den. After you've cleared the den, you take the vengeance card of the boss you just used and you put it together with the other scored vengeance cards. You didn't score any points for this, but it might be useful later on as a scored card for the goals at the end of the game. 
Another option, if you don't have the vengeance cards in play to match the boss cards, you can use the blitz vengeance cards. You can use them with a den belonging to any gang, but you can only use them to score dens. When the dens are scored, they give you one extra victory point, and you cannot use them together with other vengeance cards. You can also choose not to fight and stay out in a combat turn. In this case, you roll uh, the montage dice and you perform the actions rolled. The speed results have no effect. Also, you can exchange any number of wild tokens or wild results for heal, recon or upgrade as normal. You can also exchange them to draw vengeance cards and you can also draw one vengeance card for free. You should have a look at the different abilities of the different gangs. The bosses and the henchmen of the Tengu Kai, they deal two hurt when they're activated instead of one. Then you have the lords that they resolve the enemy activation result before the player takes any hero action. So usually the enemy activation results are resolved at the end of the roll. But you have to have in mind that they need to be in the same zone as you when you start your hero action. So for example, if you start in an adjacent zone of the lords and you roll an enemy activation, they don't affect you. And when you move in the next zone during the same roll, they don't activate. Also, another important thing is that if after your three fight rolls, you don't manage to successfully clear the den and there is still enemies left standing, then you might need to take some damage. You have to suffer one hurt from each enemy left standing that you pass by on your way out. And after you finish the last combat round of Act 3, the game ends. Then you count your victory points, you see how many more you can score from the goals, and the player with the most victory points is the winner. So that was Vengeance. If you have any questions, just post them in the comments section below and I hope you enjoy the game.